In this video, we're going to be talking about installing packages from the AUR using an AUR helper called Yay. So as always, you'll be able to find all of the commands that I run in this video over on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so what is the AUR? The AUR is the Arch user rep repository, and it essentially holds a bunch of packages that are not in the official repository. So what do I mean by that? So typically when you try to sudo pacman flag s and then some package here, you'll be able to install it, but some things are not found in the official repository. Um, pfetch is only in the AUR. So this is where yay comes in. Yay stands for yet another yogurt. And yay is like pacman, but it's for the AUR. And it's written in Go if you care. So installing yay. So make sure you have git and you can just install git with pacman. And now you can install Yay using Git. There's two options that I'm giving you here. Uh, you can install the Yay binary, which is just pre-compiled Yay, or you can install Yay and compile it yourself. Um, this is typically how I do it, but um, I know some people do it this way. You'll see a lot of different binaries just kind of when you're going through the AUR. And it's usually a trade-off, but sometimes it's definitely a better idea to install a binary. Um, it's basically just it's just pre-compiled, right? So just run this command cd in to the uh, the repo you just cloned down and then run make package flag si All right, so some commands so once you have yay installed you can install packages from the AUR using yay flag s and then the name of the package So now I have two options presented to me here. I can install pfetch or I can install pfetch git and flag git is a lot like flag bin, right? Not that they're the same thing, but they're essentially telling you, okay, well, if I install a binary, then I'm installing something a little bit different, I'm installing a binary. If I install pfetch flag git, I'm installing the latest, um, the latest version of pfetch directly from the GitHub repository. So this isn't always a good idea, especially if someone typically uh, pushes to master a lot and does a bunch of crazy stuff, then this is not always the smartest move. Um, so look out for flag bin and flag git um, on, on the end of packages because that'll be for either binaries or for um, pulling directly from git. Typically you'll just want this. So we'll do one, press enter. All right, and now we're installing that. Now after we installed it, if we wanted to remove it, and actually let me get some space here. If we wanted to remove it, we would just do this and it'll prompt you and you can say yes and it's gone. All right. And another thing that you can do is you can run flag RNS and what RNS, what the NS does is it gets rid of all of the dependencies that came down with um, the package itself. This is typically how you want to get rid of packages. This is just probably how most people do it. Um, I recommend this method here. All right, so a system upgrade. So if you know how to do a system upgrade with um, Pac-Man, it's the exact same thing in Yay. Uh, you can just run Yay, flag S, YU, and this will update all of your packages installed with Yay, uh, like from the AUR, but it'll also update all of the packages that you installed with Pac-Man as well. So it'll do the official repository and it'll do the AUR. You can also just run yay, and that has the same effect as this. Um, now, if you install a bunch of flag git, or you know things with git on the end of them, then you'll want to run this, and this will make sure to install. It'll make sure to update all of the uh, packages with uh, dash git attached to them. All right, so search for a package. So there's, I'm giving you guys a couple options to search here. So let's jump to the top here. You can do yay, flag s, s pfetch. And what does that do? It searches kind of a fuzzy search because I'm not sure why it gave me this, but it searches um, the AUR for packages that we can install. So we can install pfetch or pfetch git, and we saw that earlier. If we just did yay and the package name, it would do that exact same thing, but it would prompt us to install them by putting in a number and pressing enter. Um, and then there is si. So Let's go here, SI, and this will give you some information. Now, um, this depends on nothing and has no make dependencies. So 
that's something you'll typically want to look at if you ever run this. I don't run this that often, but if I do run this, that's possibly the only things I would care much about. I can't think of much else. Maybe conflicts would be important. And yeah, conflicts might be important. Like if you if you already have like pfetch installed and you want to install pfetch um, dash git, most likely you'd have a conflict here. Um, all right, so moving on. So list packages that need to be updated. So if I do yay flag p u, now nothing's going to happen for me because I just did a system update a minute ago uh, before I started the video, but you would get a list of a bunch of packages that need to be updated or that can be updated. And after a while, eventually you're going to notice that, um, or you might not notice actually, you probably won't notice that a bunch of packages that you have installed on your system are completely useless and they're not doing anything. So these are a bunch that are on my system that I'm just not using. Um, I can completely remove these and it's taking up, I guess, about 757 megs. Now, I recommend you do this maybe, you know, um, as often as you really remember. You could maybe put it in a cron job or something. I don't know if I would do that, but you could. And I wouldn't run this every single day. I, I would run the SYU every couple days, maybe every other day. But this I would run maybe, you know, once a month, once every two months. It, it doesn't matter that much. All right. So for all the other uh, things that you might want to do, you can do man yay. And this will open up the man pages for yay. So you can kind of go through them. And there's a lot more options than what I showed in this video. But I assume you probably won't be using a lot of these options. All right. So moving on, here is a good Reddit link with an explanation uh, for the flag git and like, or the dash git and dash bin packages. Um, I just thought this was a pretty good explanation. There was a lot of good questions asked. All right, so enabling color output. You saw some color output. So if you want to enable the color output, what you'll want to do is go like this and then pacman.conf and we're looking for color yeah so this is probably commented out for you and what you can do is you can just like get rid of that so pro possibly it'll look like this and you'll just get rid of that all right now the next thing i wanted to talk about is that the aur technically can be dangerous uh not everything up there is vetted so you know make sure that when you go over here and this is the aur right here I'll try and leave a link in the description. I did leave a link at the, at the end of my blog here. So if we check out the AUR, typically you can look at things like popularity and votes. If something is very high in votes and popularity, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. Um, I've never had a bad experience from the AUR, but I just figured I would mention this. So, you know, I guess watch out for malicious software. You do always have the option to go look at the software that you download, especially if you're not downloading a, downloading a binary, right? Um, the last thing I wanted to go over was a fuzzy search. So if you have F FZF installed, what you can do is a pretty cool thing that I found in the Arch Wiki and I talked about in a video that I did with the, with uh, FZF and NeoVim, was you can run this command right here and you can kind of ignore this error package thing not found. Clearly it's found. And then you can literally search through the entire AUR, right? So if we search for Brave, which is a browser, and I just figured this would be a good thing to search for because it's showing us options for Brave, the package itself. And let me make this a little bit bigger. So Brave, the package itself, Brave bin, and Brave git. So now you can see things like, okay, well, Brave git has make dependencies, right? So this thing needs to be built. And here's what it depends on. Now, if I go down to Brave Bin, what you'll notice is that this has no make dependencies. And that's because it's a binary. It just comes down pre-compiled. So it doesn't depend on anything to build once it gets here. Um, it does depend on basically the same stuff though, once it is here. And then there's Brave itself, which is just the stable version of Brave. It's pretty much what you're gonna get out of Brave Bin. Only difference is you're gonna have to build it yourself and you're gonna need uh, these make dependencies. You won't need to have them. Most likely it'll pull them down, build it, and then get rid of the make dependencies. All right, and then I left some links here. So this is gonna be a link to um, the Yay repository. You know, make sure you leave them a star because it's a really cool uh, package manager. 
and I'm leaving a link to the AUR. We were just at the AUR a minute ago. Definitely, you know, get familiar with this page. You can kind of just search for any package that you want. So how we were just searching um, the AUR a second ago, this is the exact same thing. So we're just going to search it like this. And just type in Brave. And then I left a link to the ArchWiki. Um, and I don't know if I, yeah, I have it right here. This is where they warn you about, you know, how dangerous the AUR is. Use it at your own risk. And they just give you some information on it. Typically, you won't get a lot of help from ArchWiki and Arch Linux itself um, about the AUR. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you like the content, make sure to go support me on Patreon. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.